that 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 that's number gonna be a good is going to continue creeping up. Okay. Um, and I think that we're very possibly going to see all three maps. Um, I will say the same thing about Astralis, as I said, for Astralis playing Cyclops, which turned out to be right, um, which was that I think Astralis are the right sort of team to play against the lost one. And I for the same reason that I said they were the right sort of team to play against the a Cyclops. They're very good at adapting. They're not scared of aggression. Um, and I think that this is going to be a very close game. Flores and Ying are our first two bands. I think it could be as well. And it's one of those that I look at. We've spoken about so many of these players. We haven't even talked about Lobin yet as well, who came in with a lot of smart talk and has delivered the goods after a pretty rough, rude awakening back on day one. Well, day two, I think it was their first game came through as they had a buy back on day one. This game is hard to call because the energy is going to be so high. What we have seen is that the average length of games has increased as the day has gone, gone on, whether players are getting tired or whatever. I'm not entirely sure, but games have got a little bit longer. And I think I'm with you, Tim. This one could go all the way through to Clubhouse and even push right towards the back end of that map as well. Armory and Throne, where we start things out, it's going to be Lost Defenders One kicking things off on the defense for us here on yeah. Theme Park. So Astralis really going to be tested in these first six rounds. We know that many teams have struggled to attack on Theme Park. Let's see if they can break that curse. We know and we've seen it um, in action time and time again on this site, the important thing. And it's there's been a strange contrast with it, really, because on Armory and Throne, we've seen, I dare say, very few wins for the attackers, if any, when the walls aren't breached. Um, because there's only two single doorways on the way in. And usually the defenders come out on top when that is the case. But by contrast, weirdly, we've seen attacking lineups a number of times not bringing a heart breacher, which it just baffles me because if you want to do that on bunk if you want to do that on initiation lab storage do what you want but for armory and throne you, you really, feel like you need it you really got to have some but you got to open at least one of those walls they've brought the ace along good stuff i'd like to see all three of those selmas successfully used maybe one on yellow stairs wall and then two on either barrels or maintenance most likely maintenance um to give you an actual access point into site um you know a comfortable access point but I'd like to see two of the walls opened up and then let's see how well the defenders fare at holding on because it makes the site a lot more difficult to keep locked down. Not forgetting we do, of course, have those hard breach rounds in the back pocket of Jane I know who can use this on the hatch upstairs. Yep. Yamaro is ready to go up here, up into the break room, straight up. So Iconic falls down to Lobin elsewhere in the map. But really you're looking at Jane I know to be the one here that gives him that hatch control, but it's simply not going to happen. Wow, Maya, Dots, Lobin lining up and deleting the members of Astralis. There are only two left, and it's Jane, I know, and Spiff. And they've got the problem that I spoke about. They do have the hard breach gadget, but it's very limited in scope in terms of the hole that it's going to open up. You can get through it, uh, but it sticks you in an animation. So they are, if they get to that point, going to have to push onto site through single doors. But they've got a lot of work before they get to that point. It's two versus four. It's half health for Jane, I know, and it is not looking pretty right now. Um, a great job done by Loss One at bringing that, uh, that immediate aggression. Now, I like that there's already one of the walls open. Actually, one of the Selmas has been used on maintenance wall so by opening this one they are teaming up together until lost one realize that they're both there together they've got got to be cautious of this area they've know they've got the fuser down though that's not a good thing yeah, which not means Astralis need to work through site to recover the diffuser and then look for a plant. It just feels like the backwards way to do it. Surely you want to try and fight back for the ground oh. that has already got things opened up. But Lobin, death from above. Jayon goes Jay Nino, four still standing for lost one. I think we all know exactly which way this first round is going, Tim, even if it has been a bit of a slower one. And here he comes now, going to find himself head first dunked into one of these barrels as the members of lost one begin to surround him, circling their prey like a pack of vultures. He's not long for this world, and Lobin gets an easy closeout. Great first round for Lost One. That's the only way to describe it. Uh, there was a, a flurry of kills towards the beginning of the round that almost exclusively went Lost One's way. Um, and from that point on, Astralis were, were pretty much done in round one. So they just need to bounce back from that. It's round one. It's really not the end of the world. Um, you know, Lost One got themselves a few kills. Astralis just need a good round to get back into it. What they need to be careful of is that that doesn't continue to happen round two, round three. Even if they lose the rounds, they need to be competitive in them, which they weren't then. Um, and Lost One is going to take us down to lab and storage this time. So I imagine there will be a reasonable top floor presence from them. That's what we have seen over the last few days when teams have been defending this site. They tried to lock down particularly access to cafe, um, but they'll do that by holding on to bunk, daycare, break room and all those associated areas.
Interestingly, this is the third most popular site on this map. Only two players ahead of Initiation Room Office. Lab Storage sat on 14. Initiation is sat on 12. But we did kind of comment before that we had seen a lot of teams going in towards Lab and Storage. And I think where many teams have been finding success is not really playing the site itself, but playing the vast majority of the map, contesting all the way out towards Cash and Dragon, moving their way back across to be above site itself around Cafe, and then looking to play around site later into the round. It just asks a lot of questions of the attackers and gives them a lot to do in the round. So especially when you're against a slower opponent, not that Astralis are slow, but normally against a slower opponent, it's a really good way of making that clock run down because because directly hitting the site is just so unfavorable to the attackers. You're guaranteed to jump into a frost mat. As you can see here, you've got these Goyo canisters scattered around as well. It's just not a pretty site to hit direct. You do have to go through generally a full map clear and get control of Cafe. j 9 or just leaving his Twitch drone on one side there. Um, if you're wondering why Ooh. he didn't take out the second Vulcan canister, um, it was because his Twitch drone needs to recharge. It has run out of uh, little zaps. Um, now we're gonna have Forest is downed after Dash was taken out so that effectively leaves us four versus four although Forrest is quite deep into the map um, away from the defenders so he might actually have an opportunity to be collected um, his team are just going to have to be careful to make sure that they don't lose two people in doing no oh, yeah. chance Robin at all finish. Robin goes in he is uh, far too close uh, to be risking picking him up he knows that the man is down in there will find that kill and Shuttle just dipping away at the wrong time there sees the man but it's Spiff who's going to get the kill iconic as well and this is a much better round from Astralis. It is a lot better playing off each other as well. They've punished Loeb in there for going to finish off that kill and I understand what he's trying to do but it feels very risky to be looking into break room knowing there could be a player on the rappel. It's so easy for the attackers to be there but isn't immediately punished for it. Instead it's by Spiff as he pushes into Arcade and then does the business instead. 2v4 for the side of Lost One and Astralis look like they are in a good spot to be able to claim their first attacking round. And they've got all the time in the world. They've got a minute and 15. Um, you know they can just take their time. They've got the top floor control. Uh, there's nobody up there to challenge them. Meyer and Dots are both back on site. So they can really just try and, uh, and find down. what's going on. A nade comes in. There is a down, but it's really not going to matter as Iconic. He's going to be able to stick the plant if he chooses to. He's come off it for the time being uh, because of the challenges Aww. from Meyer, but that's the answer. Just don't worry about the diffuser. You don't always have to. Just go in and get the kills. My there going in for the read, I think, onto the potential plant that was going down initially, going where it heard that sound last, but not aware of Shuttle coming in from Arcade side. So we've had two rounds here, Tim, that have been very similar, but for different teams, where early kills have come through in a flurry. Three quick kills for either team, basically leaving two left alive on the other side to try and piece things together. So we haven't seen either side really establish themselves yet. Maybe we'll see that going into this fourth pick preference site of Initiation and Office. Interestingly so far, skipping the choice of playing Armoury and throne. Here we go then. Uh, we're going to be setting up with a, a nice little uh, line of sight out towards Cash. So it looks like lost one maybe. Um, somewhat aggressive, not reinforcing out towards that side. Uh, just going to sort of play a line, hold it and prevent Astralis from pushing in mm. um, by the looks of things. Like I say, you'd normally expect a little bit of utility on the, the east side of things. Are we going to get some reinforcements? Yes, we're going to get some reinforcements finally on the initiation wall, but there's uh, there's little else. So it's almost as if lost one uh, there we go, we've got another one. Uh, they're going leave that hole open so that they can peek around into it but they're sort of almost inviting um, Astralis in here you know invite them in and then challenge them when they come in what I do like about this site is I remember back when theme park first got reworked and released back into the pro map pool I think it was train hard at the time against Navi I want to say it was and Na'Vi did a wonderful job of just hard denying on this site by getting Mute Jammers basically in a line down the wall from the office wall on the single doorway, down towards the waiting room, also down and towards the doorway coming in from control. And Trainhard just kind of met themselves with the inability to get past it because they were stacked upon with my magnets, ADSs as well. Nothing really worked. Iconic there being pay, well, paying quite a high price for not being aware that you might find a member of Lost One at any given window or doorway and being taken down. But to come back to that previous point, I do think think really Astralis should be able to you know work their way through they're obviously clearly quite a competent team here no frag grenades on side to burn through doorways but we'll see how long that line of mute jammers holds out 
Spiff has taken down Maya to level things up, leaving us in a four versus four. Now then, this could be good for him, Forrest. He's sneaking up the yellow stairs at the minute, and I'm not sure that Lost One are aware of his position. Um, obviously, the site is on initiation. Dots is watching in that general direction, but again, I think it's more out of habit than knowledge or anything. So there's two on this side, at least for Lost One, that could well be caught out if Forrest can establish himself at the top of yellow stairs and just hold that line of sight down there. He's going to pick up a lot of Raw to its potentially. Surely Dash at this point is aware of what's going on. Another one straight onto that window to give him the information that he there might need. Go. But there's Astralis on the march forward and they find two, almost a third, but Dash a little more responsive. Now angling himself out here as it is a push coming in towards the left. Sees one on the right as well, finds his head. J90 decapitated by Dash. And we're down to a two versus two, Tim, the closest round we've had so far. I love that from the Azami. army. Just a brilliant example um, of that gameplay. Forrest, though, he does not need much of an opportunity. Seeing just a pixel of rise and ripping his head off over the top of the Kiba barricade, leaving Dash now in a 1v2, Spiff straight in, getting the diffuser down, and this is another nice round from Astralis. We're going to have Dash having to fight his way back into sight. We'll use the rotation back into initiation, moving his way through, just sort of so slowly seeking, but with no information ahead of him, he's having to face check everything, and he's going to have to find two kills. He's got to try and find the one man in here. It's the back of Vault. Now he knows and he's expecting the swing to come out. Why wouldn't you? Gets the right read that someone is coming from behind using this Keeper Barricade, but can't quite use it. Forrest on point with his shots that round. That was great movement from Forrest there. As soon as Spiff had the engagement, you saw Forrest was at the top of Dragon Stairs. Spiff has the engagement, makes the call out, he's near vending machine, and straight away you can see Forrest move through control into initiation and basically is creating that 180 degree crossfire. So there is no nothing that could happen. I, I guarantee as Forrest was moving across there to make that challenge, Spiff was stepping up to the doorway to challenge from the other side. Um, and it was really well played from Astralis. It was just a great bit of movement overall, I yep. thought, because it looked so calm and peaceful for about 60 seconds in the middle of that round. And I was like, okay, when do Astralis spring the trap? And sure enough, you saw them all mobilize, spring to life at the same time and collect a couple of kills that just completely removed the presence that Lost One had throughout the map. Really good execute coming out and a really interesting first three rounds where again we've seen either team have a really dominating round and then Astralis capitalized in the third round on the ability to execute all as one. Let's see how we do in the second quarter of those now. We are going to step down to that downstairs site Tim. It's Armory and Throne here in round four. Okay then, we had this back in round one. It was the only successful defense that we've had so far from Lost One. Um, they were able to talk it down. It was three kills early in the round, basically, um, that made it very difficult for Astralis to think, look at this aggression. It's, uh, it's lobbing on the mozzie. He's just gonna be waiting Do they right know? on the threshold there. Um, very keen to get himself out of that door if the opportunity presents, but no, the E1D scan is gonna back him right off. We'll see how long it takes Astralis to push through here as well. I think Logan's expecting to get pushed, maybe naded up from below here, so he's got to be careful. All of Astralis, by the looks of it, basing themselves on this east side of the building. One, two, three, and four, so there is one missing somewhere, but no doubt he'll turn his head up. There he is on the southwest side. But these four want to get themselves inside a cache, in my imagine, get some top floor control, get the maintenance wall opened up, and look to start a push off from there, just being mindful of that potential flank coming out from Lobin. I like this, getting the wall open nice and early. They did it last time around, 45 seconds in, and they're going to have an awfully big breach into sight. I'd like to see, as I said before, a little bit of pressure on that yellow stairs wall as well, if they can achieve it. Um, you know, just give multiple angles for Lost One to worry about. Dots is getting really aggressive on that breach, but I think they might be aware of it here. Shuttle just popping another E1D scan, potentially, um, to prevent that. <laughs> he goes through the smoke, just <laughs> taking a breath of it. Just a little pre-fire, doesn't get his man because Dots is in behind the shield. He's going to come back and this is a real back and forth on that breach. Really good read by Dots as well to get back in behind that shield. Took himself in and he's the one going hunting here. Finds forest, calls the trees. 5v4 for lost one. That's really well played from Dots there coming oh. away with that kill. Oh. Jin, I know. Oh. Absolutely beautiful prediction of the location of Dash there to take him down. Low been able to find Spiff and lost one. Keeping their man advantage at four versus three but Astralis have made a lot of good progress towards sight at the minute. If they can win this fight, which they Great do, play. but Rise is there for the trade. Perfectly done, lost one.
really well played this round. I think there's an, a good, healthy measure of aggression, knowing when to pull back, playing for trades, for example, that have got lost one into a 3v2. But I cannot count Astralis out yet. Even with two on the board, they are still lethal. Jane Arno with the right sort of idea that there is someone sat inside of this room. He's trying to bait out the swing. The swing comes in, Rise is the one to get the kill. And Iconic has got it all to do against three with 45 seconds on the clock. Something tells me, Tim, it's an impossible task. It's very unlikely at this point, especially without Rise uh, being dealt with. He needs to get in here and win this um, fight. Rise has hit his shots well in the first two times we've seen him engage. You rat! Iconic. You rat! Certainly trying his no. damage. And Rise is able to close that one out. Triple kill for him in the round. And to be honest, it was a pivotal performance from Rise there in round four. Um, Lobin being challenged at the top of Dragon Stairs. Rise on hand to support. And then just took out the rest of the push from Astralis across the top floor. Holding it down. Um, and Astralis, I'm not going to say a missed opportunity there, but I like what they did at the beginning of the round. They got the pressure onto site. They, you know, gave them something to think about. But... Um, the response was was great from Lost One, to be fair, uh, particularly the step out of Dots from site to get that kill onto Forest. I think that and also the trade from Rise inside of Initiation. This is why when at the very start of the round I said, you know, you want that top floor control, you want to start working your way forward from there, you need to get inside cash. They paid for not having that control around Dragon. Lobin was always going to be a threat. They couldn't push him through the single door on that side of the map, meaning the only real option for Astralis was to go through the breach. You need more than one point of ingress, otherwise you will pay to pay the price. So really, Shuttle had no choice but to try and push Lobin, unaware that there was a player slowly working his way through initiation in the form of Rise. And even though they found Lobin, Rise wasn't taken out. Then you saw the follow-on gunfights that had to come from that, where two other players had to go after Rise, and neither could find him. So. Paying the price there for yeah, not clearing the full map. I completely get they want to try and go direct to site and not play ch like Kiss Chase all around the entire map, for example. But Lost One are going to punish you if you don't force them to stay away. This is where things like you're seeing in this round, the Dekebi, the Jackal, maybe looking towards something like a Nomad as well, may come in to help them throughout this game. Lobin again aggressive on that door. He's just going to barricade that off. Uh, again, deciding enough is enough. The opportunity not presenting itself, so he's not going to overcommit to it. And I like that from Lost One. They do like to bring the aggression, but they don't get silly with it. Um, you know, they'll see if the opportunity is there, but if it's not, they don't try to force it. And that's good. We're going to have Astralis trying to get themselves into break room here to begin with. It's going to be another top floor clearance, uh, but they need to be careful because there is a lot of manpower and a lot of presence over there from Lost One to try and prevent. So we've got the rotation through to initiation and <laughs> we've got uh, a little bit of backup as well coming in from Lobin on the Malusi. Just the one little hole being opened there by the sound because it's just dropped into range of the mute jammer. Of course now cir circular rather than cylindrical like it was before. So it only gets up one hole gone but they've managed to get rid of the jammer on the other side and now they can keep on marching through with the drones as well as a much wider berth on which to take firefights through that breach. Spiff's going to come head to head in a moment with, I think it was the Malusi that was playing up there. It actually looks more like the mute that's backed off, possibly Rise again. Um, it's going to be going for the challenge. They are both there. Um, Spiff, we may, you know, we know he's got the ability to come away and find both of them given the opportunity. Um, but right now, Lost One are playing a clever game. They're very mobile. There's every time they sort of get close to an engagement, Astralis here. Lost One maneuver and change, and they've burnt one minute forty now without anything really resembling a gunfight. It's what I like about this site, again, is you can play so much of the map and just keep on falling back in waves. And Lost One aren't surrendering map control particularly easily. They are forcing Astralis to have to work for it here. They don't know where most of these players are. Again, it's like trying to chase smoke. You can't simply can't chase it down. And here comes one on the step out, but immediately there's an answer. Spiff there, onto Rise, dash down to about half HP as well. Lost One finally getting caught by their tails. Yeah, that's good from Astralis. Spiff stepping up when they need him um, and getting the kill onto the pivotal Rise from last round in and getting the defeat. User down actually here, not messing about. Spiff on the cover, manages to get one onto Maya. Lobin is there for the trade, but the damage is done. The diffuser is down. Iconic J90. They managed to get two, leaving us now in a four versus one. Lobin, he is really on the back foot here. Beautiful shot on the window. Can he get himself a second? No. Shut down as he comes through the door. And Astralis, they get themselves back into the lead. <laughs> we are going to struggle to understand what Lost One say, of course. Astralis will have a better chance. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I know slightly less Portuguese than I do French, so it might be... Uh, to be fair, I know more... Because of my days in Latam, I know more siege-related words, to be fair. Like kitchen, you're a pro at. 
Yeah, guess, things like, you know, kitchen and uh, dining room and stairs and things like that. <laughs> so you'd be great in the house, mate, but not anywhere else, it sounds exactly. like. Ah, oh, stairs, good. That's about as far as you get. I can just imagine the kind of chaos that would cause. Alrighty, good round from Astralis. And last one, I know we're talking about, okay, they're playing well here, they're moving, they're dancing around a little bit and not really directly giving themselves up to Astralis. What I love from Astralis is they kind of found the weak point there in the armor, pushed straight in towards site once they got a kill and chased Dash away with the half HP hit that he took. Got that plant down and then forced Lost One into a retake. That is where they struggled a couple of times in this half is on the retake, but for the NA side, up three and two on the attack of theme park, you will not say no to that any day of the week. In case you're curious, by the way, this map played eight times throughout the competition, 59% defensive win rate. Okay. There are four maps that are actually quite high in the defensive win rate. None are below, I think 47 was the highest, also the lowest that I saw when it came to defender win rates. I like long gone days of like the 37% of like yeah. coastline, for example. I like this from Forrest, just moving in, going to keep himself using the Hell Presence uh, reduction device, keeps himself off the cameras so they won't be aware um, that he's got himself up to the gong door. A good start from them. Um, always like a, a little bit of knock play. We see a lot of knock bands now for good reason. Very powerful, very quiet operator. Sneaks up. Um, and Forrest at the moment is sort of working very solo on that east side of the map while the rest of Astralis uh, trying to push from the west side um, to put pressure. We've got two putting pressure on break room, one pressure in cafe being joined by a second. So Forrest is possibly one to watch as he just sneaks his way in. I mean, surely you expect Bet there's a player behind the shield and you're just giving it in for free here. On the step out, will he find a second? No! J9-0 nice and low has got to hit a headshot on the reverse if he wants to win this. As he's down to about 25 HP, a single bullet enough to put him in the grave. Forrest is uh, making slow progress, but he knows there's a man ahead of him, but the barbed wire could be his undoing. He moves up very quietly through around the keeper barricade. This is fantastic work. They've... Ah! Oh, Sorry, Forrest. You muppet. <laughs> I really didn't think that they had any idea who was approaching, but obviously they were sat watching the angle, so it just didn't matter. I love that. Um, so and Forrest gets cut down. That is the true caster curse there. Jane, I know, doing some good work. Uh, Maya's actually going to be downed in that back and forth. Unlikely to be picked up, I think. Um, Dash just managed to find one. Iconic and Jane, I know, getting aggressive and finding a trade there. Dots is in on the action as well. And that leaves us now with a half elf. Jane, I know, three to kill ahead of him and unlikely to see anything other than a 3 3 half. Absolutely. Trade for trade for trade around this cafe battle here that ultimately has gone in Lost One's favour. They did put a gunfight elsewhere as well, which has put them into this three versus one. It has created a little bit of room for Jane Nano to work his way through sight, but equally on the side of Lost One, why would you try and get too aggressive? Wait for him to expose himself, take the freebie, and convert the heart three and three. Good though for Astralis, I think overall they'll be happy with how that's gone. Well, this is, you know, coming in, you've commented there on the defensive win rate, they do have the advantage, um, so it's definitely possible for Astralis to put in a 4-2 half um, and take this 7-5 overall, that much is for sure. Um, I think we're probably going to see a slightly different loss one on the attack. Uh, I think we might see them just up the aggression a little bit, um, moving quite quickly. Astralis, I'm not saying that's going to work because I feel like they are the sort of team that can adapt and play into that. Not a problem. Um, but uh, we'll see how it pans out. We're going to be armoring thrown for our first defensive round of Astralis. Let's see, I think shape up here with Lost One on the attacking side. And equally, how Astralis look to play undefensively, because I think Lost One have played very loose around the map for the most part. The one thing I do love is that although they've played that very loose style, they have tried to keep themselves in trading range at all times. I give that to both sides, actually. Really good plays around the trades in that first half. So maybe you'll see a similar sort of style. You may see it a bit more independent, looking to control more of the map. Depends on their confidence coming up against Lost One, though, and how, how, how much they respect their attacking prowess, I guess. Five seconds to go. I mean, that decay we already screams to me that Lost One are showing a bit of respect here to Astralis. Yeah, and also that they want to, you know, get moving across that top floor, put the mm. Dorkaby calls in, sweep across, get the kills. Um, but look at this. Look, this is A, aggression oh, no, from know. Astralis, but also B, they've got, I think, four players on the top floor at the minute. They've actually just dropped away as I'm saying that. Mm. Um, so they've they've dropped back down and sort of towards site. But, you know, you've got to be careful with that because obviously there's always the opportunity for just pushing straight into site. Um, but it shouldn't be too much of an issue. 
issue now. I think we've got two or three up on the top. Yeah, I think it's the read on the stage of the round as well, right? Generally in the first 60 seconds, especially on a larger map like Theme Park when you spawn away from the building, you know, Cafe is very similar as well. You know that there's a good chance one or two players are sat on drones whilst three look to establish some early control, getting themselves contesting a balcony, getting up on the roof. So the only thing you're going to see inside the first probably 30 to 45 seconds, unless there's an Amaru, is going to be drones running through the map, just like this. You take those drones out, you back away, you let the phone calls come through from Lobin as well, any utility that has to come through, and then get yourself back away to safety. I'd much rather see this style of play than one where you just go, let's sit on site because we're too scared about what might come. They are getting out on the map and burning through drones. They've killed four off so far, for example, and now 60 seconds in, they are looking to play a little bit tighter together. A couple are playing back downstairs. One can't decide if he's upstairs or downstairs in Iconic this is, but that means Lost One now have to re-drone things and it really slows the attackers down, which is great play from Astralis. Really good map management. Forrest is going to be getting his engagement pretty soon, potentially, unless he chooses to hop over uh, the mezzanine balcony. He's going to be picked up there. The drone will be lost, but Lost One are not messing about. They're going to be chasing that in. Um, we've had Shuttle just watching the hatch from underneath, so there's obviously an assumption um, that there's going to be some progress across from Lost One here. Forrest is going to get killed out. I said his engagement would be coming. He doesn't manage to win it. Um, and there's also J9. Oh, Nitro comes out from Shuttle underneath, but does get shot down. Lobby manages to find Iconic. Dash is downed in the mix. Iconic um, was the guy that got him down, I think, though. Yeah, J90 has gone by the wayside as well. So that's the top floor cleared out. We're in a 5v1. I can't see Dash not getting picked up. No. 5v2, though. You've got Shuttle and... Sorry, 5v2. Fine. One C4 still in the back pocket of Spiff as well. It is a tall order to ask you to hold out against this again. I think Astralis have played this round really smart. I think the way they've played the map has been perfect. They've just not come away from good gunfights against Maya. Shock horror. The absolute demon of the whole competition so far is doing work. Two kills in the round after a quiet three and four start to the game for Maya. Has pretty much guaranteed that his team get through this round relatively unscathed. A few bullet holes obviously taken through Dash and Maya. But outside of that, with 20 seconds to play, ah, I start getting a bit nervous when it gets this close down to zero, though, Tim. But they've also not half reached anything, Des, and I explained earlier why that's a problem on this site, because they're going to have to come in through single doors, as it was. All three of them ran in through a single door at the same time and got a couple of kills. But it's always a risk. You know, that's something that one player can just mow down very, very quickly. Those kind of spots where you're pushing numbers and advantage in through doorways, so at the same time, although it looks messy, you just play for the trades there. You know if your teammate in front of you goes down, the chance of them spray transferring from one to the other is relatively low. It does happen, don't get me wrong, but it's difficult. You have the chance to instantly take aim and click the shot, and away you go. That person is then dead. So a good little 3v2 there played out by Lost One as well. Defenders Looks a little bit ropey for a few seconds, but attackers. had the right idea towards the back end of things. Again, I'd like to see more of that from Australia, so I think they played the round really well up until the point they lost their three members, and that came down largely to the gunfights. A couple were caught off blind, for example. Maya had a brilliant round overall, but the actual play style itself, I think, was really good. We're going to move to Bunk and Daycare then. Astralis choosing not to double down on Armoury and Throne. I'm going to head upstairs instead. Um, I'm interested to see which side Lost One push from. Do they go direct and try a bit break room and cafe, or will they get themselves established and move across through initiation? We will see as we spawn in and begin the round. But Astralis, uh, they need to ultimately, I think, you know, the, the big loss on that round, as silly as it sounds, is just losing the gunfights. Um, it is, yeah. There, there was J90 and there was Forrest upstairs and they were, you know, there to play their lives and to hold off that push across top floor and they both lost their lives without response. They were caught a little off guard. They were, but, you know, if yeah. that's what you're there for, you should be yeah, off guard. Like one, or, one or two seconds difference there yeah. and Maya doesn't get a 2k to start the round off and put you on the back foot immediately, right? But, yeah, certainly something that they need to uh, to be looking to improve this round. That's this gun fight, for example. Oh, the pixels. The number of times we've seen a matter of pixels being between one player and a kill is ludicrous. Maya comes in, but do they know about this player tucked in towards the back? Surely they do. I've just heard a drone rolling around as well. They must know that he's here. Iconic taking one, but Maya's first. No! It's a direct trade. Iconic doing great work there to draw in three players. A drone also rolling on through and to get the trade because he's one of those operators as the Jaeger that your gadget is already down. You've done your work during setup. You are just a warm body, a walking gun at that point. Maya... Frag grenades off the board, an operator that's not there for the execute when you need to be pushing multiple angles. Information. Well worth it. 
a lot of information from those Gemini decoys as well. Um, so yeah, big loss but with Maya going and also half health damage going on to Dash as well um, is going to be uh, a big factor in the later round. Jane, I know going to find Lobin and this time the advantage Ouch. is for Astralis. We're going to have a Selma charge um, detonated any second. Dash might just get caught out here. There is one on the arcade stairs. Um, Forrest doesn't peek. He heads back upstairs instead. Um, but had he looked around the edge of that Kiba barricade, he might have just got himself a free I love that, by on the way. to the knock. The Kiba barrier position on the main stairs stops you getting flanked up by the nook, for example. Like, they can't walk up without having to smash through it or destroy it in some way. So he is so safe up here, knowing that he can't be backstabbed, and all his attention can be towards cafe, towards the arcade window, up towards break room. Just gives you one less angle to worry about, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it can mean everything when you're playing that position. Somebody finally got the Twitch drone, but a little bit of damage was done. Some utility loss. Dot sends in a nade. We've got him also looking just underneath there, trying to find anybody he can through the drone hole, just looking for that cheap kill to level things up. But still, it remains four versus three. Going to sacrifice a drone. That's quite a, a heavy cost there to be taking the laser gate down so that Rise can push through that double door. And, I mean, he needs to... I was going to say, he needs to be pushing that fairly soon. He doesn't want that getting reactivated and the drone being a complete waste of a loss absolutely not but they're into a good spot here it feels actually to hit sight although they can't really look forward towards daycare bunk is an option until spiff shuts one down and now they're forced into gunfights doubling up for a little bit of a trade there's one on the ground what an absolute rat down goes j90 2v3 for lost one with 15 seconds to play make it a 1v3 great hold by spiff especially in this round it looks like this is it for lost one rise is going to try and make a plan happen but this one is pretty much done they've run the clock down here they've forced him into uncomfortable situations and they'll get the shutdown great round by Astralis. Spiff has done an amazing job there. Um, on the door into Bunk, he's just sort of peaked. He's held them back. He's not overcommitted. It'd have been easy for him to lose his life there, for him to keep having a look, keep trying to get those kills. It's, you know, you, you sort of, your head gets into it and you, you're in that fight and you're really trying to come out with a win for your team. But no, he was very, very patient on the door there. Um, did exactly what Astralis needed. And unsurprisingly, we find ourselves at 4-4 on the scoreboard in what is turning out to be another very close game does absolutely now we're going to this site that has been a bit hit and miss i understand why teams like it i understand why it's becoming and growing in popularity i still think it's like half the pick rate that we've seen of bunk daycare for example with armory thrown obviously being the most popular but what i like about it is it does give you the ability to play large parts of the map as Lost One showed us back in the first half, it can also leave you a little bit exposed. All it took was Astralis to get a single kill, and Sight was opened up wide because the other players were all playing around Armory Throne. One was up towards Dragon. It was a long retreat all the way back to be able to contest Sight, and then just got picked off one apiece. So we'll see if Lost One spot themselves a gap in the Astralis defense here, or if Astralis play a little bit more of a tight-knit game here and keep Lost One at bay. We get into the action phase and somebody is going to give themselves a sizable advantage by winning this round. Um, it really starts pushing them towards having that uh, that map point opportunity. If you can get the next two, um, then you get sort of a, not a free chance, but you get an extra opportunity to close this one out. And neither of these teams want to be starting things off with an overtime game here. As you've said, there's the late games have sort of tended to, to provide that quite often. And whether there is a, a you know an issue of a, a little bit of fatigue for the teams you know they'll be obviously sleeping in a little bit in the morning yeah, but so. ultimately they've still been up for a large majority of the day you know they're not going to be um, sort of in bed until 5 p.m. that's what I mean you know you're not it's <laughs> not going to be like a 10 a.m. game where you you know you get up you've been up an hour or two and then you start playing your game you know you're going to have been up a large portion of the day so it is uh, going to be a factor now then we're going to lose a Selma charge there that's not ideal tried to just open up the walls into bunk there so they could play from that break room repel um, Dots has actually moved away as soon as he threw that it was a, a throw and forget for him but um, it didn't get forgotten it got shot off it did indeed he said here that initiation wall getting opened up in towards bunk there's a way to try and break open some of those longer sight lines that run through the entirety of theme park right deep in to try and keep a couple of players at bay dash is having a little bit of a dance off here and gets jumped out oh, by nice Ferris. man that guy's got some big gonads
Forrest straight out the window, gets his reward and straight back in. That is uh, a great opener for Astralis. It puts them on the front foot. Now they do have um, a little bit of a problem here. Lobin has just walked on into sight. Uh, gets himself an absolute freebie and certainly leaves Astralis saying, guys, there's one in sight. <laughs> the problem is support line a little bit cut off there. No one else can back him up and Forrest proves that point. Taking down Lobin without so much as a whisper. Darts finds one, instantly traded out by Shuttle mind you is this constant back and forth between these two teams Myers dead from the hatch Let's Forrest go. into Come another Astralis starting to build a bit of momentum good now shit, Tim guys. yeah Astralis right looking pretty it's good there um, much, much better than I think for the last couple of defensive rounds they, they were really in control I felt then massively so Wrapping it up to 5 and 4. Still far from over for Lost One. Still got a lot of room to battle back in. Still got a timeout to make use of on both sides if required. But it just feels again, Tim, we did say it might be a long series and we are boiling up towards that 12 round mark. I think I said 40 plus to you, didn't I? When we were talking about when we were talking about the rounds that we'd counted, I said uh, the rounds that we casted. Sorry, I said um, I had a feeling that tonight might be another 40 plus between these two, but uh, we'll see. The first one's looking like it could well be 12 at least, um, so that certainly puts us on track. Um, but you know, we never know. Something uh, something might change. We might get a 2 nil. We might uh, be blessed with an early night because we've got the morning shift tomorrow as well. Um, but we don't mind. We don't complain. We've got used to it at this point, does he? Yeah. The, I mean, I don't think Medix has. He's got himself like set up with the tent. He's got a sleeping bag. He grabbed dinner and I advise you best get breakfast as well. It could be a long night. <laughs> he despises us, he tells us, which I know is a lie. He loves us to pieces. Here we go then. We're into the action phase. We've got one over by 90 default. Um, I think just more rotating than anything. Not going to be um, sticking out in that area for too long. Just jumps over dragon stairs and heads mm. downstairs. We see the silhouette just ahead of us doing that. Well, I actually like the lineup coming out from Lost One in this round too. I spoke about this back in the first half for Astralis at the end of round four. I said, you know, if you feel that you're constantly getting kind of sideswiped by the members of Lost One, a Nomad might do you well. A couple of Claymores might help. Look at what we've got in this round. The Nomad's on side, a couple of Claymores. Got the Osa to really sort of spearhead the attack as well. It does bring a much more coordinated attack coming out of Lost One that isn't reliant on so much on winning gunfights and, you know, making sure you've got flank drones down. It makes things a little bit simpler so they can focus on looking forwards rather than around them pretty much constantly as they're moving through the map, just like the Solus is doing right now. That's it, just using that scanner, just checking around, seeing if there's anybody drawn in, seeing if there's any utility coming in that can be spotted out. Of course, the person carrying the case can be seen pretty much at all times because you can see the case. Um, still five versus five, lost one, not really established too deep into the map yet. We're going to have Dash moving in through lockers, uh, looking to open up the bottom of Yellow Stairs wall. We get a bit of a gunfight issue in Forest. You can't be losing that one. Dash, he manages to get the job done, gives a line of sight in towards sight. And this is exactly what I've been asking for Des. I've said countless times, please get two breaches open. They haven't got the second yet, but if the first is the bottom of yellow, I would think that a second might follow if the opportunity presents. At the I minute, mean, they've extended the opening at bottom yellow, and they might look to push directly into pillar. They've got a oh, There we go. They've done They've, got, got, a, they've got a Thermite right. They're going to get through this no matter what happens at this stage. And here we go as well. Spiff almost managed to take the head of the Osser on the way through. But Shield goes down just in time. And he's going to keep himself alive. Noggin still firmly on their shoulders. Maya looking to move his way forwards too here and try and establish more control inside of the sites itself. Lobin comes out and finds Iconic with the suppressed gun charging on the way through. Still three left here for Astralis though, but you are coming up against five on the other side. Right. Come on, last one. Don't let me down Great here. That's shot. a beautiful kill from Jay and I know I've been calling for the longest time for a team to open two walls properly into this site. Let's see if it pays dividends and That's if they Spiff. can get the win. Spiff oh. is going to absolutely slam dash with a nice headshot there, leaving us 3v3. Astralis have fought their way back into this. The Solis at the top of Dragon is causing a problem, but I think they're aware of his location. Now Lobin moving in, he's pre-firing. Jay and I know knows he's coming. There is going to be the flash there and bada bing, he finds his kill. 3v2 pressure coming in from those breaches. If there's one at the bottom yellow, this could spell big trouble. Oh. There isn't, though. And there Only is the two. kills coming in from Astralis. And even with those oh, multiple no. breaches, it might not be possible. 
You've got to go fast on this one. He knows he's tucked inside the corner, gets his legs as well because Shuttle clearly can't see because of the soft wall that is still intact. Knew he was there, played it out nice and slow. Far closer, truthfully, than it should have been. Again, not forgetting that Lost One were in a five versus three. But I think the issue they had there was players were still being a little bit individual. They weren't looking to group up behind the Osser, for example. They weren't playing in behind flashes. Whatever else needed to be done, it was still quite individualistic at times. But they get the round win, and that's what matters the most. It is. Um, you know, I, I, I won't claim that that was purely because of the two breaches, but it is, like I say, a step towards the right way to attack that site. Get as much of it open as possible so that you can avoid those pesky single doors. And also, it starts removing those places of safety. For example, you might have, if the yellow stairs wall is open, you'll get people playing by foundry, play hard against the wall. But once maintenance walls open, they can't do it the same because you start being exposed to new angles and that's why it becomes so difficult for defenders to stay inside of sight it worked out ultimately for lost one it was still close it's still a very good sight even with those breaches but that is leveling us up five five and we are getting at least 12 of theme park it's another one of those games as well, Tim, where I feel like we're seeing the impact from every player on the field. I mean, looking down Astralis, it's easy to say everyone's having an impact. Look at the kills, 66688. Six, six, eight. On the other side, it's a little bit more varied, the lowest being four, the highest being 11. But you can think of rounds back in that first half from Dash, where he was having an impact running around the map, keeping the enemy team busy as well. So. As it stands, we are in for a real treat. We are in for that team-based series. I think it's what we enjoy the most. Seeing one player drop 20 plus kills is fantastic, but team-based series where it's about the, the team, not the individual, far more rewarding in the long run. We've got Spiff on the Azami playing on Dragon Stairs. Going to try to, I think, make life difficult for them to get into control. Um, rotation opened up by the Capcan of Iconic to allow him through into Armory. So plenty of movement, plenty of uh, attention around the map. I won't necessarily call it aggression um, because they are generally Astralis playing in behind utility here, like the Keeper Barricades, like the Black Mirrors, um, just trying to make life as difficult as possible for Lost One for them to move in. There's, there's not going to be any clean challenges for Lost One, I wouldn't expect. Yeah, interesting as well, we've got the Rook on side. Two picks here we obviously haven't really addressed, which is the Glass and the Rook. The one for Shuttle gives you a nice little HP boost. Well, obviously not quite the way it used to work before. Now it just juices you up that little bit extra. So in most cases, you can take an extra bullet. In very rare cases, maybe two, depending on the distance. As for the Glass, I'm not too sure about this because there's only the one. There's only a couple of smokes in back pocket as well. It does help in this kind of situation when you've got a mirror window to push into it. Maybe that's the read they've had. But Lobin did have this hovered right from the start of the phase rather than bringing it in for attack or repick. So something tells me he just really wanted to run this operator. Second smoke is going to go out. Um, I don't think he's really going to get any joy. There's nobody pushing um, onto the mirror window or through the door. He's just trying to pick up like maybe a long range rotation of somebody moving through. But Astralis are playing pretty static at the minute. They're not, um, you know, really running around the place too much. And the opportunity has, has passed, really. The smoke has dissipated and J9 all gets back onto the mirror. This is a little bit of a wasted utility, you feel, from Loss One. And the kills do Lobin. start to come in. Forrest and Shuttle Lobin. get in too, leveled up by Lobin and leaving us now in a 3v3. He's managed to work his way in on a bit of a flank there as well. And here we go, the push comes in from the side and Ryze who managed to get himself inside of the break room, taken down as well. Lobin still looking to move, goes for the naughty little shot coming out there with the bearing, but can't quite connect. Dash finds another, it's down to a one versus two. Dash has been playing well so far, um, just needs to Look and find himself a couple of frags. He's going to be in a, a successful 1v3. Oh. Should he win? That's Is one, he two. Oh. Can he get the third? He sees him. What? Yes, he what? reacts. How did the Rock not know that he was dead as he was stood right next to him? One versus three. Unreal finish from Dash. And that gives the map point opportunity over to Lost One. I can't believe what I've just seen. I thought for a second he disconnected or something because there was this 1v1 gunfight going on and the response in those situations basically 99% of the time is to swing out and make it a 2 versus 1. You go low, the player behind you stays high, you win that gunfight every day of the week. But I think what he assumed was the gunfight was won and he was going to rotate back through the little rotation in the wall and then come through the door to his left. But I don't know, that felt a little bit strange there. I'd love to know what happened and maybe we'll find out later, but hey oh. Yeah. Actually, that was my first looking. Yeah. I can bring Barb this time. 
Do you think they're cutting on and going really quiet now so that we can't hear them? I think there's probably possibly an element of that. They know that uh, you know the, the the listenings have been there, if you will, and obviously um, you know it's just we know what the teams are like. They want well, to give away tell you what as little so funny information earlier. as possible. But I was sat. Um, so a couple of the analysts have been going and sitting in the actual playing area where the teams are, because in front of where their like area is, where you can see the board, like the Rainbow Six logo at the front, about probably. Seven or eight meters away from that, there are a few chairs sat down in front of the black curtain. The black curtain being so they can't see out into the hallway across from them where there are TVs with the game on where the analysts sit and watch the game itself and obviously have the ability to analyze and feedback stuff after the game. But those chairs, we've had some of the analysts sat there and we were sat there watching Sonics versus Eminem earlier. Gunner is the noisiest little ugh, that you could possibly imagine. Every round, yap, 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 really screaming it down. And we got to a point where the tactical timeout was called and he was going ballistic, like, whoa, yeah. And then they were just like, right, shut up now, because Captain Rake has come in. And he literally went from screaming to like hard cut off and then was dead calm. It was so funny to see him go from basically screaming all these expletives and being really passionate to calming it down because he knew he was on camera. And I just wonder, what are these players doing in the round maybe that we don't see? I'd just love to know sometimes. Oh, I'm sure there's plenty. I'm sure there's plenty. We've got Jen, I know, um, on the one eye. He's trying the little peek out of the threshold as well. We saw this previously. He's waiting for the rappel. We've seen this um, successful already, but I think lost one uh, are more than aware now. This is interesting, Des. Usually we see teams, if they bring a Monty for the first time in all eight round, it's usually because they just want to try and secure a round. Um, and that's exactly what we get in here. And you've got to wonder, is it going to do the job? Are they going to sort of cheese the round with the Montagna and just get away with it? Um, you know, playing behind that shield and just cause a real problem that Astralis haven't seen so far. That's Gotta it. remember that this is Astralis' map pick as well. They don't want to be losing. I think it's a good shout when you know there's a mirror on side and that there's a good chance Astralis are rolling it out again. Bring smokes, bring Monty, things that can just stare down that mirror or at least render it ineffective for a short amount of time and then look to push forward. Speaking of those mirror windows, Forrest is still running around with one of them in pocket here. I think he's waiting to see exactly where it should go down. As we know, there is one set up on this wall. Is there going to be a second stack? Surely no. Surely not. Maybe it is. Is it going to be the classic double mirror where uh, there's probably a lot That's of people... been shot out, I've just realised. Yeah, the little it's... at the bottom is broken, so he wants to get a second one on there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an old tactic, really. It's one that probably, you know, a lot of people watching, if you've not been playing for too long, you might not have seen it. It was popular a good few years ago. You put two mirrors next to each other, you open one and you play off the other. Um, now we tend to just leave one of the walls soft, shoot it out a bit and just play onto it like that. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it's something that I've not seen in a long time. Like you say, it might be out of necessity, the fact that they've, uh, you know, lost the mirror so they've brought in another one but uh, Jane I know just going to dump out an impact near there does a good chunk of damage to the Monte nice. and a beautiful kill onto Maya and that's exactly what Astralis needed Des they just needed answers to the Monte they just needed to render the Monte ineffective and that's exactly oh, what no, they've done no! He's been given away by the Malusi Banshee. That's go. exactly why the gadget exists. But it does all the hard work. Jane I know is down to a slither of HP and just looking to play a little more passive here. Backing away, holding the angle, letting the attackers come walking in towards him. I think Dot's here a little bit isolated as well. I know that Rise is still up on the field as well. But two versus five, I think it's fair to say to him, this Monty attack has not gone the way they would have wanted. No, nope, certainly not. It's as I say, Jane I know largely ignored the Monty. It was ineffective. Um, he was able to find his kill around the yeah, back. Is. Forrest is going to find the kill to find. Finally finish him off. That's the shield gone. And it's all up to Rise in a 1v4. J9 all low health, but that's about all that he's got going for him. They know exactly where he is. Now, Impact Nade comes out, but he's not going to quite do the job. Not even going to do a tickle of damage. He's going to come around this corner looking for it, but surely there's somebody watching. He knows that there's somebody around that bomb chassis. They've given that away a little bit free, Astralis. Nobody else there ready to challenge as Forrest goes down. Um, but with time ticking away, very unlikely that Rise is able to find anything else here. I think he's going to go switch over to the pistol but no shuttle finds it and Des we're going to overtime for the first time in this series as well Tim and I have no doubt with how close it's been we'll see more of this right it's going into a quick tactical timeout so this is where we shut up Na hora que chegar ali, lembra aquele ace que eu falei pra ele, pra vocês já abrir só um ace é só? Só pra fazer pressão. pressão. Faz esse chip ali, mas era bem de queimar. Ele vai queimar. Ele vai queimar. Não, ele não tava queimando, ele tava jogando da mira, não tava? Não, 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 não tava ele tava na academia, ele tava na academia, bem, tava na academia. Mano, se esse cara dronar, esse cara arriscar queimar, tá... Mano, você pede pra ele o cajuzinho, tá com o caju, ace, come pela porta. Foda-se. 
É, a ponta ali, mano, a parada é que a ponta ali é uma ponta ou fêmea. Dá pra fazer mais ou menos a mesma vez, só que eu vou tirar a montanha e pegar o boneco pra trocar tiro ali, mano. Pode ser, pode ser. Eu gosto. A bit, um, obviously, you know, we don't understand specifically what was being said there. Um, people in the chat will, and they can Yeah, yeah there will be people in chat, I'm sure, who will understand that, and will probably yeah. put in it in the chat to, you know, to, to translate that for everybody, um, which is, is why we still shut up. But um, what I did pick up there is, compared to some of, you know, we've been watching sort of the styles of, mm. of how the coaches do things. That was that was very much a discussion. It was conversational, yeah. It was yeah. very much a discussion between coach and players. It was very much, you know, um, here's my input, and then the players, you know, coming back with that and sort of a back and forth and almost seeming to sort of reach an agreement of, you know, how do we think we work through this? Um, so another another interesting point there. It is, yeah, really, really interesting. And again, I know that obviously we don't understand what they've said, as Tim said, and same as many of you at home don't, but I appreciate there are some in chat who are tuning in here and maybe watching the English broadcast because Twitch chat's really fun on the main broadcast. There's a lot of you here. So thank you for watching and hope you're enjoying. Here we go then with the overtime defense from Astralis. They start on this defensive side. It was their map pick, so they naturally get to choose which side we start on in overtime, whereas Lost One got to choose where they started in regulation. And that's why now we're back here in probably what is going to be considered an advantageous situation for Astralis when they have two defensive rounds to play through. Dash straight away, um, aware of the potential for those peaks, not going to be giving anything away too easily. Uh, we've seen Jane, I know, previously in the last round, right up on this door. This time it's going to be Spiff. Um, they're really keen to try and get a kill onto the Repel. I just don't think it's going to come, if I'm honest, because Lost One have been so aware of it. Um, they're very unlikely to be giving anything away to that rise. Straight up, opening the hatch uh, at the top of Yellow Stairs. And already we see Astralis sort of being pushed back a little bit. Spiff dropping away, overdrag down back onto the ground floor um, and there's not too many of Astralis left up on this top floor now. No, I backed away quite early and uh, I messaged early on, I well, me messaged, mentioned earlier on how like pleased I was with the way that we saw Astralis defending this map. Here he's trying to get his way back up but Lobin is ready. He takes him out basically free there. About half his HP lost in the process. So not entirely for free but it's still a good player to have off the board. Though we did comment on this earlier on, it's the Jaeger. Gadgets are already down. You know, main value in the round being added already. He is free to take those kind of risks because if you get rid of the lion, you remove flashes, you remove the EE1Ds as well. It is a lot of value to bring to your team if you can get that kill. So, medium risk but high reward. Iconic, certainly worth keeping an eye on out there. He's uh, managed to sort of squirrel himself away into the uh, the back corner of the map. And if he doesn't get picked up by drones, which as a solace, it does give him a little edge to try and keep himself off those. Um, and he can sit himself in gong for. Uh, a large remainder of this round, he could well play a spoiler, so keep an eye on Iconic as the round progresses. Oh boy. Bam! No! No! <laughs> it's a solid it's surface! Just like, yeah. I think he assumed he was, because I assumed he was as well, just sat just inside Cash, but no. Cash is that little bit further back. <laughs> We've all been there, Tim. We've all been there. We, we have. We absolutely have. It's difficult to remember sometimes exactly, um, you know, where the concrete parts uh, start and where they end. Um, but Iconic, a little oh. bit unfortunate there. Dash knows that there's one just playing on the outside, uh, oh, sorry, on the inside of that breach. And he's just going to cautiously move his way across and see if he can find himself a little peak. Rise manages to get a near oh. kill. Lobbing onto Iconic. This is not looking good for Astralis at the start of overtime. Spiff manages to do some damage, but the Diffuser's going down here. Dots is going to look to get that plant. There's Forest manages to find one. Forest finds two. Rise will get the kill onto Spiff. It's now all up to Forest. He's going to need an ace here, Des. And he's down to 25 HP. It's just likely not to happen, is it? Does it for Astralis there in that first round of overtime? Lost one, winning the attack. That is a big deal. It really is. Um, that's a, a bit of a turnaround. Um, we've seen it as 3-3 previously, so no real advantage either way. Um, but you just feel that Lost One had a really good defense of Armory and Throne. They were successful down there twice. Um, and there's a, a good chance here that they're able to close that off. Um, you know, by contrast, Armory and Throne was won by the attackers both times when Astralis tried to defend there. So a little bit bit of a side choice question yeah, for me um, on that one but lost one makes perfect sense straight into armory throne they've got a hundred percent record there let's see if they can close this game out it's a real nice thought when i think about it thing because obviously we're at friday night it's kind of the end of the working week for many people at home just sat down to watch some siege this evening and this is the game that is worth sitting down and watching 
potentially going all the way to 15 if Lost One cannot hold on here. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. We'll find out in the next few. And what I love about how competitive the game has been, we've never had more than two rounds won back to back. It has been blow for blow for, for these two teams through both halves. A real good mix of kill based rounds, but also objective based rounds too. It's got a little bit of everything in it, this theme park game. Certainly has. Um, previously, when we've seen uh, Stralis attacking this site, they've been very quick to try and open up at least the maintenance wall. This time, Shuttle is going to come with the Selmers. It was a late change away from the Habana. Um, somebody wants to get one of these opening kills there. Somebody's desperate to get a jump out or a peek. This time, it's going to be Lobin who's looking for it. Really, really fun bit of information for you is every single time we have played this site, no matter which team was defending or attacking it, Lost One has won every single one. It's been played five times. They have won five times. Now, do you feel lucky to go for the sixth here and make it a full roulette? We'll find out very shortly. But I do feel that that advantage is there. And Astralis are the ones who need to sort of come up with a plan here, try something a little bit different. The Jackal, no doubt, is going to help towards that. But is it enough to shut down the mobility that we've seen out of Lost One throughout this game? Iconic getting the hatch open straight back on the drones. There is a uh, defender, I think, in and around that area. We're going to have barrels closed off. Dash with a, a big, a big, big nitro onto shuttle. It's not just about the diffuser. It's the fact that the hard breach is down as well. Des, I've spoken so many times so far about hard breach on this site. And Astralis, no matter what happens, are going to have to work in through single doors. And I tell you what, Forrest isn't messing about. He's going straight in, tries to get one, but no, he has to dip himself himself away. Spiff does find Dash. Nah, Nade goes in and clears out the shield, but oh, Maya. still going to be able to play through and behind Foundry. And Maya manages to find a big pick up there. Four versus three. How on earth has found that? Must have been like a perfect angle straight through out there towards the other side to get that kill. It's 4v3, as you say. Still half the round to play, so a lot to do here for Astralis in terms of time, but also in terms of, well, having to get the round over the finish line. More drones starting to roll on through here. Still a good few that they can play with out in the field. Three or four to be, pre um, be precise. And Spiff, you just can't write him off until this is done. To be fair, him and Jay now know. Both sat on 10 kills. More than capable of finding the frags they need to keep this game going. Certainly have, but as I say, the big problem is that Lost One can fall back to site, which they've pretty much done now. Um, at least two of them are back in there, and they can just sit and watch single doors, Eight. one each, um, and wait. Oh, but there we go. Can't leave yourself that close to the door. The Solace is going to be down there. It's lobbing. He's not going to be collected, I wouldn't imagine. Dots manages to step out and get a big kill onto Spiff, though. That is certainly not ideal. Meyer on the warden, perfectly placed. Can see through the smoke. 30 seconds left to go. It's going to be a very easy pickup. Look at that. J9 or just string too far forward, taken out. And it's all up to Iconic. Comes down to this one final 1v1 that Meyer connects and lost one. Take the first half of theme park, but Tim, it did take all the way to overtime. It did, and I think, in all honesty, we're going to be seeing a bit more of that before we are finished. Two very evenly matched teams there on theme park, but last one with a big advantage now, having taken Astralis' map pick. It is, but with the number of times we have seen map picks trade